guys, it's Two Bricks, and I have a brand new model to share with you today, the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. And hilariously, uh, as I got up this morning ready to record this video, I saw that LEGO had unveiled its very own Jurassic Park large-scale T-Rex set, which I guess is coming soon. Um, so yeah, they've beaten me to the punch, but um, this is my take on uh, this particular creature, and it's been in progress for a couple of months now. So I'm really excited to be sharing it with you, and hopefully we'll get her some legs and a, and a tail soon, and um, she'll be looking a little more fearsome than she does right now. So of course this is the main dinosaur from the Jurassic Park movie franchise, or at least one of the most iconic ones. And um, this is based off of the Stan Winston Studios uh, shooting um, animatronic, the full-scale one that they used in the T-Rex paddock escape scene uh, for the original 1993 movie. Um, I tried to replicate the color scheme as much as possible. Um, it, what's funny is in the film, a lot of the scenes are, are so dark and rain-soaked that the T-Rex almost looks black or very dark brown. But it, it was actually a very colorful puppet uh, that they created, so I tried to be faithful to that here. Um, one of the things that you noticed in the opening or in the intro is the ability for her to open her jaws like that and do the classic T-Rex roaring pose. Um, and the actuator for that is actually all the way back here. I, I really wanted to keep it as far away from the head as possible because there's just something about getting that kind of remote uh, action that just makes it feel more alive than if you're you know, directly putting your hands on it to manipulate it. Um, so that was actually a fairly tricky thing to pull off and I'll show you guys how that was done when I start to tear off some of the side panels here and we'll kind of get into looking at the model uh, in a little closer detail with, uh, you know, with a mind to looking at the engineering side of it. But from an aesthetic standpoint, there was a couple of really iconic things that I think I had to just nail. And uh, it's one of the reasons that I didn't really ever attempt to build this model before, even though I had wanted to for some years. I just didn't think that I really could capture um, this look right here, particularly the teeth and the angle of the way that they curve down like this and then come back up into the mouth and then all of the, the various angles of kind of the way that the jaws intersect and then the, the top teeth coming down over the bottom jaw. I just, I just didn't really think that there was a way that I could do that until I really started playing around with different pieces. And actually this uh, tooth plate right here was the kind of inspiration piece or the seed piece for this model. Um, I don't know, something about it just caught my eye as I was building a different creation. And I just, I don't know, I, I saw it and I thought, that looks like the front teeth of the T-Rex. And all of a sudden I was inspired and I just went to work. So looking at the T-Rex from front on, um, there's a couple of things from the films that I really wanted to capture in the front um, angles of it, because we do see it from the front a, a fair few times in the film. Uh, one was to be able to see the eye from uh, all front angles, since uh, Rexy is a, predator and she needs to be able to have, um, you know, vision in a forward-facing direction, I felt like that was an important thing to do. And initially I had used hollow studs for the eyes, um, but those didn't really protrude in the same way that these lever base pieces do, so I decided to make that substitution, even though um, technically the stud with the hole in it is, uh, is more accurate to the look of the eye that uh, the puppet had, I just feel like this achieves more of that look that I wanted for the, the front on profile and so that was something that was kind of important to me. And if we take a look on the uh, inside of the mouth right here, another thing that just took uh, an awful lot of thinking and trial and error was the tooth assembly. To be able to achieve this kind of um, flared out look from both the inside and getting the exact angles of the teeth to line up, like this one had to be slightly lower than the one in front of it. Just figuring out kind of tolerance and clearance levels for all these different clips to coexist side by side. These ones are attached uh, sideways onto a uh, two wide brick with uh, modified start on the side um, piece right here. And then it transitions into a three wide build. Um, so yeah, there's just, there's basically every trick in the book that I could think of to be able to achieve the positions of all of the teeth, um, just to really make sure that I captured that. And then I have a couple of modified plates with clips on attached at 45 degree angles to be able to give you the last couple of teeth back in there. The bottom jaw was fairly simple in comparison, mostly just relying on these same um, two by one tooth plates uh, right here that, that were the initial inspiration for the model. 
Um, but the actual way in which these had to be attached was fairly tricky because there's not a lot of clearance in here and I really wanted to be able to build uh, upside down to get the different colors of the um, kind of underside of the chin and be able to have not a, a ton of studs or undersides of plates poking out under here. So it took a fair bit of uh, figuring out to get all of this um, down here done. And actually this whole bottom jaw is attached to the tongue, which is hinged into the back of the throat. And that just gives me a little bit of play for when this is closed up, just in case I want to slightly adjust the angle of the jaw, but um, still keep it kind of a really tight tolerance in here. I just wanted to have that little bit of extra play. And if we take a look at the back of the head, you can see that there's a fairly sizable gap right in here where um, there kind of needed to be an area where this portion of the neck could be accommodated into the head as the jaws open up. So if I just open these up right here, you'll see that that just tucks in and then this little plate assembly uh, just perfectly kind of covers over that area and gives just enough clearance to be able to open the jaws. Um, and I think from almost any angle, you really don't perceive that there's a gap back there. It, it feels pretty natural. And I think using um, the brown back here and all throughout this area kind of helps to camouflage that as well. And what's interesting to me about the bottom jaw is that it's actually only attached right here. It pivots around this point, but then uh, the attachment to the neck happens down here where I have this little um, sloped assembly where there's a clip-in bar on this end and a clip-in bar on that end keeping it anchored between uh, the neck and the rest of the head. And that, I was able to just create a, um, a connection point that perfectly kind of aligns this uh, section right here and where it changes direction into this part right here. You can see I have a, a single two by two, um, 45 degree angle wedge plate in there. And that just kind of perfectly lines up and just creates a really, really smooth connection where even though um, it's changing angles uh, at a pretty unconventional angle for uh, Lego building, it really doesn't feel out of place. So one of the things I forgot to mention is that these uh, little kind of flappy bits that go in between the top and bottom uh, jaws, those were kind of tricky to create only because of the space necessary for them to be able to go inside of the jaw once it's closed. I had to create a fairly sizable hollow channel uh, in between the tongue and the jawbone to ha have the place for those to go. So the last thing that I wanted to take a look at before we uh, take some of this apart and look at some of the details are these stubby little arms right here. As ineffectual as they are, they're a very identifiable part of the T-Rex and I really wanted to get that right, obviously. Um, each of the fingers can be articulated down. Uh, there's an elbow, uh, elbow joint that uh, has a single degree of motion there and then the shoulders are just these ball joints. So she can get into a fair few poses. There's actually a shot in the movie where uh, she's using these claws to grab onto the fence right before she kind of bites through it. And so I really wanted to be able to replicate any of that kind of thing with the, uh, the level of articulation. Oh, and of course, I forgot to show you guys the second action feature that this model can do, which is that when you twist this gear, the head elevation angle changes and it goes from being upright to straight and in line with the spine. And that was something I wanted to do because when the T-Rex roars in the movie, there's a couple of times when she kind of leans forward and she gets that real nice angle right the way through her spine and it just lets it all out. So I just felt like that was something that was uh, really crucial to replicate if I could. And um, being able to do this and make sure that the jaw mechanism still works from whichever angle it's at was uh, another interesting challenge. And actually I'm gonna take some of this off and let's take a look right now at how that was done. So I've peeled off the first layer, which is uh, this section right here of the body. Uh, that's just held in place by these uh, modified uh, one by four bricks with studs on the side. And this whole section of the body is built sideways. And the reason for that is that I wanted to have a really strong core to be able to support all of the weight up at the front of the model and what will eventually be in the back. So uh, I built a core that goes horizontally and then I wanted to have a second kind of strengthening layer that goes vertically um, that sits on the front. So that's all uh, pinned in to a lot of different points and creates a lot of extra stability right here. And then uh, this is the gearbox that uh, enables the whole neck opening mechanism. And I'm gonna peel this layer off and then we can see how that uh, ends up affecting the neck. Oh man, so this is getting pretty grim now. <laughs> I have taken off a huge section of her body, the neck, and a large part of her jaw, 
just because I wanted you guys to see uh, how a lot of this stuff kind of all connects together. And don't worry, she'll be fine. I'll put her back together when we're done. Um, so starting off with the gearbox right here, this is the gear that um, attaches to the uh, exterior plate right here that uh, this gear drives. And by having a large gear on the surface drive this smaller gear on the inside, it creates a lot of extra speed um, that basically means that I have to move this whole assembly a lot less to achieve a full up and down rotation. But here, because I'm actually activating this small gear, it's going to take a lot of twists. But essentially, what's happening, there's this Technic lift arm in here that connects through the and is buried into the neck and is pivoted right around this point. And that is what's actually just holding the neck in place. But what's creating the movement is that in here there is a, um, I guess you could say a slider that's on a hinge. And that slider is on a track that moves up and down in this direction. The slider has a tooth plate on the top, which connects to a gear that is inside um, on the other side of this axle. So the worm gear in here drives this uh, gear, which drives the axle, that then drives uh, a second gear on the inside that moves this tooth plate in and out. And then that uh, is what creates the motion of the neck going, uh, driving it forward and back, which then pivots the whole head upwards or downwards, like so. So down in here, you can see that, uh, well, maybe you can't see, hang on. Uh, there are some Lego string pieces that connect the slider that's back here, which when I pull that, that activates the whole uh, jaw opening mechanism. The string pieces start right here and terminate down here. And uh, by using string, I was able to make it so that at any point of elevation, there's enough slack in the system that um, it will still uh, force this track through and pull the jaws open like that. Uh, and I wanted to remove the side of the jawbone as well, just to show you guys um, how much hollow space was really required to be able to have those, um, those little flappy parts <laughs> right there. And uh, how few studs actually attach the jawbone portion, but once it, uh, it attaches into here with a lot of different connection points, it all becomes very sturdy um, in the end. And then uh, through here you can just see that I have a rubber band. It's uh, red right in there, it's kind of hard to see. Um, that rubber band just provides a little bit of tension so that when the jaws are up, uh, it wants to snap them back down. Um, and I'm thinking about actually ripping this apart a little further to double up or maybe even triple up the rubber bands so that it has more tension and it'll snap back more readily. Um, but yeah, that's about all there is to see for the uh, mechanisms and the interior of this thing. I'm not really sure if there's going to be any other um, moving parts to this with the legs and the tail. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, stability and strength will obviously be a huge concern with a model of this size, just kind of standing on two fairly thin legs. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. And I'll have an update for you guys uh, as soon as I can. All right, there we go. She's back together. Life has found a way and Rexy's alive again. So there we go. Um, so yeah, I've uh, been having a real blast working on this whole project and uh, I'm definitely excited to get an update to you guys as soon as I possibly can. Um, it really just depends on how quickly my brain can figure out solutions to the various problems that uh, I have ahead of me. So one of the things that I really didn't want to have to do, but I may end up having to do, is to rely on a stand for extra support because I really don't want to make the legs super chunky. Um, I, I want to have as much accuracy to the form as possible. Um, but I just don't know that there's anything strong enough that uh, I know how to do that would enable me to get that. Um, and, and especially if I want to have any kind of posability to the legs, which would be nice. So that's something to be figured out. Then uh, how much articulation I want to have in the tail, um, all that kind of stuff. That's a lot of um, an interesting kind of debate that I have ahead of me as well. Uh, do I want to, you know, have more articulation, but that usually equals more gaps, or do I want to try to have a fairly static tail, but kind of sculpt it into a single nice shape? Who knows? So uh, I'll try to post updates as quickly as I can for you guys. Um, but until then, if you like the video, sorry, it's been a really rambly one. <laughs> um, if you did like the video, please do all the YouTube stuff, comment, like, etc., etc. But if you didn't like the video, please uh, thumbs down and give me a comment and let me know 
what do you think uh, I could do better because this is a brand new channel after all and I'm really excited to share uh, my creations with you guys and I want you to be able to enjoy the content that I'm creating. So yeah, just let me know what you think. And um, the next video I'm going to do is actually going to be a tips and tricks video on how to deal with brown Lego pieces breaking on you, which I experienced a ton of when making this model. So I've learned a few things and hopefully I can share that with you guys and spare you the pain of your brown pieces cracking and splitting apart. As for the rest of this series, I'm thinking I'm probably going to do three parts, maybe a fourth. Uh, it'll be really interesting to get a hold of LEGO's official T-Rex and do kind of a side-by-side -side comparison and take a look at some of the techniques that they're doing with their one because LEGO designers are obviously geniuses and it's always really fascinating to see how they approach the same subject matter. So yeah, uh, tune in for that one and I'll see you guys later. Thanks again for watching and uh, yeah, that's it. Bye. Mm -hmm.